Hey, Shlom, Shlom, when I start with souls, but give no praise to you, but Shem, Yah, Shai, but Hashem, Rakak, Wadash, double honor to the apostles of JMS, and honesty, brothers, doing the work and truth, one sincerity. This is a, a, a quick one on this article here. I uh, dated twenty four Sunday twenty fourth of June. Well, so that's a uh, Sunday gone past. Says why thousands of Swedes are inserting microchips into themselves. Well, well, read bits of it. Says it's thousands of people in Sweden have inserted microchips, which can function as contactless credit cards. First thing that they mention it says key cards and even real cards into their bodies. Uh, once the chip is underneath your skin, there is no longer any need to worry about misplacing a card or carrying a heavy wallet but for many people why the idea of carrying a microchip in their body feels more dystopian than practical right so uh touch on that last point there right that's because push hasn't come to shove right you have a lot of people that say no i won't take the chip i won't take the chip even some of the men in gms will say i ain't ain't gonna take the chip but push hasn't come to shove yet right uh, you know, the, the term of Jacob trouble, trouble hasn't really come around. That's well, Jeremiah 30. We'll start from verse 6. It says, Ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with a child. It says, Wherefore, do we basically, you know, uh, you know, you see a woman travailing with a child. Like, uh, you know, because you've got them pangs. You know, she's in pain. You know, she, she, she's out of, uh, she's basically out of control. Right? She, it says, wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, right, as a woman in travail, and and all faces are turned into paleness, right, basically going into the fact that, basically, it's going to be so bad that men are going to be in these positions, you know, wailing, you know, hands on his loins, right, but, you know, turned pale, right, great fear upon them. Right, it says, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Yeah, the elect of Israel going to be saved. They ain't going to take that chip, right? But the majority of people, they going to take that chip. They going to put it in them when when this is happening. Right now, they can say, ah, you know what? I ain't going. I ain't going to take the chip. And then whilst they're eating a, you know, a sandwich or whatever, but when you haven't eaten in a couple of days, right, then, then they're going to be questioning certain things, right, we continue, uh, it says some have suggested that Sweden's strong welfare state may be the cause of this recent trend, but actually the fact is behind why roughly three and a half thousand Swedes, and that was a point I wanted to get into here, right, so three and a half thousand people in uh, Sweden, are basically, you know, destined for destruction. This is Revelation 14 and 9. It says, and The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, well, it's basically you put that microchip, the RFID microchip in you. Well, it says, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb it's basically saying you take this chip you're fucked you're through right and then uh what you call it, it goes into you know transhumanism where, where hackers you know it makes a distinction on the two uh but uh, from from a quick google to verify the information i couldn't really find what what was uh what you call it what was referred to um in there but uh you know you you read the comments and you hear what you know lost in translation b16 b system 666 right so you know even people in the world you know they know that this is the mark of the beast right so, so revelation 13 and 16 says any cause of thought both small and great so your average man you know, and you're, and you're a celebrity, you're, you're a man with fame, you know, you're rich and poor, you're rich man, you know, and you're bum, right, you're free and bond, right, so guys like us, you can walk around, we can wake up, we can, you know, go to Tesco's or whatever, and bond, you know, those that are in HMP, you know, Belmarsh or whatever, whatever prisons, complex, right, it says to receive a mark, right, that word there is karagma in the Greek, Right, 
scratch it etching a stamp and imprinted mark right in their right hand so they were you know receiving the imprinted mark in their right hand this is all in their foreheads right so basically it's you know you take this chip not really where where you take it doesn't matter it's, do you take this chip right it says and that no man might buy or sell save he they yeah, because you got to say that because jake will be like okay i'm gonna I'm take it in my belly or i'm gonna take it in my in my uh, bicep you know or my elbow right it says and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name right so without this mark you won't be able to buy or sell Right, and they, they even just the thing of it being a form of identification, a form of a would, would you call it a form of a ID, a passport, whatever. Yeah, you, you look at try try get a job without proving you, you you have a right to work in that country. You ain't gonna be able to. So if you ain't, if, let's say the you know the you know the, the, the RFID microchip. Is uh, what you call it only used as a passport, you still won't be able to buy and sell, right? Over here in England, the infrastructure for what you call it for, for, for the RFID microchip to be used as payment system is ready there. Cash machines have uh, what you call it RFID terminals, right? You know, you, you, you go on the uh, transport networks, it's all RFID. You know, a the payment systems here isn't like you when you go to like a shop. They they all support contactless. All shops more or less have a what you call the card readers, and all the card readers here, you know, nine ninety nine percent of the time will will have uh, touch capabilities. Right. It just so happens that over here in Sweden, they they just be going in. Man, Sweden's a small country as well. Right, Nate. This and this is um, what you call it. This is a good point in this comment here. It says why? Because they're idiots. Why? Uh, you know, it's a good quote. Says, but I'll get to the point. It says, however, this fact of faith is not in technology, as believed, uh, but in those who supply it. So basically, saying you know these these Swedes, right? Their faith isn't in technology. As, as this comment here says, but rather in those who supply it. And then you ask yourself what the scriptures say, right? This is uh, Isaiah, the 31st chapter. It says, woe to them, and the first verse says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Or in America's modern day Egypt. All right, let me get that for you. Actually, Revelation 11 and 8 says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Right? And, and this is, a, what you call it, their dead bodies. Our scriptures talk about if you wander, a man that wandereth out the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's in Proverbs. Well, in fact, it's probably listed here in the precepts. Uh, Proverbs 21, 16. Right? It says, uh, in the sea of the great city, Right, which spiritually is called Sodom. Why? Right? Because if they've, they've legalized uh, homosexuality, and that's really the beacon where that's pushed out the world. This is an Egypt, right, where also our Lord was crucified. Right, Egypt, you, you know, uh, representing bondage. Right. You know, you look at the back of the one dollar bill. What you have? You have a, you know, a pyramid, and that's where we, uh, would you call it? We. We serve captivity. It says where also our Lord was crucified, right? Going into fact, that's that's that where that that image of Cesare Borgia, right? That's that's where it's pushed the most, right? So we go back here, right? It says the modern day Egypt is talking about America, right? It says and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong, right? So a hey, America's got the greatest military on earth. Which a it does, but it is nothing in contrast to the Lord's, right? Because the Lord is going to, when He comes back, He's going to destroy the militaries. Right, let me get that real quick. I'm just, I'm just going to jump straight to the point. Right, it says uh, Second Ezra thirteen and eleven says, and they were all mixed together: the blast of fire, the flaming breath, 
Why and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which had prepared to fight, right and burned them up every one. Right, so basically, people when law comes, is is his chapters talking about, you know, Lord Yao Shai on his chariot, right, bringing in the destruction. You know how how he was he, he was in a massive chariot, you know, graved you know graved himself a great mountain, right. You know you couldn't see where it was. Uh, what do you call it? Where it was. Uh, at the beginning of it, he couldn't see the bounds of it, boundaries, right? It says, uh, so basically, then, uh, then you know, these these heathens try to fight the Lord in this chariot, right? But then it says, what it says, um, and they were all mixed together the blast of fire, the flame, and breath, right? So, you know, the laser beams, etc., coming out the chariots, right? It says, and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. Right, so these these heathens are gonna try and fight against the Lord, right? It says and burn them up, every one. The Lord's gonna burn them up. Right, it says so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Right, so basically what Ezra saw is you had all of these guys try to fight the Lord, and they all just vaporized like nothing. Right, and he was afraid. You you read uh, was it second Ezra sixteen? It says, Woe is me, woe is me, who shall deliver me in those days? Right. But yeah, like I said, that's that's that military might that Esau has. And people what do you call it? People have faith in that. Right, it says, But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek Yahweh. Right. For instance, you know, you you be getting hungry, Esau says, All you gotta do is take the chip. Right, you you're not seeking the Lord because what does the Lord say if you're if you're an Israelite, right, and you're of the elect? The Lord said this, Isaiah sixty five thirteen says, "Thus therefore thus saith the Lord, Power, behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed." So you know the elect of the Lord's men, right. Or rather the elect of Israel Let me say it like that Would you call it the, uh, the, They go and eat and they go and drink Right They ain't gonna look on uh, Would you call it They ain't gonna look on Look look to Esau Right Right But they're gonna look Unto the Holy One of Israel Right Not like what these people do Who, who won't be doing that and Who won't be seeking the Lord Right so uh, yeah, let me uh, let me just end that there. Lord's will, you know, that was edifying. Until the next time, say shalom.